Hey, good Friday morning, everyone. Welcome to the second round of our virtual candidate meet and greet. My name is Brett Skarkey. No, I'm not Chad. Chad had some important business to tend to this morning, namely moving a child into college. So uh, he wishes Ooh. he could be with us, but uh, I know mm -hmm. he's going to be watching it at some point. So welcome to the second part of this virtual candidate meet and greet series hosted by the State Chamber PAC. We are excited to bring this new content to our members and local chamber partners across the state. And I know we have a lot of those chamber partners on board with us this morning. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to working with you a lot in the near future. As voters, it is important to know who is leading our state. And as a business community, we think it's equally important to have elected officials who take a stand on issues that grow the state's economy and support all businesses. Today, like I said, part two of our two-part primary runoff virtual series, we plan to continue this segment later this fall before the general elections as well. For our primary runoff series, we have secured all statewide candidates on the ballot on August 23rd. That's next Tuesday, by the way. The format for our program will consist of a 15 minute one on one interview with each candidate and I'll take questions from the audience so if you have a question you'd like to submit it. It's the state chamber text line at 405-818-1939 get those in we'll try to get to those as we go through our conversations with the candidates today and finally a request to our candidates. Uh, let's just assume that the audience already agrees with you that the opponents that you are facing are vastly inferior to you and that you should be the nominee. So therefore, keep your answers focused on what you will do if elected to office. So let's get things started this morning. Our rundown looks like this. Todd Russ will lead off. He's writing for state treasurer. Todd Thompson will then come up batting second, corporation commissioner. Leslie Osborne running for labor commissioner and then finishing up with April Grace running for state superintendent. So like we said, you see Todd in the screen there. Todd Russ is a candidate for state treasurer, originally from Sentinel, Oklahoma. Todd has over 30 years experience in banking, including serving as CEO and president of Washita State Bank while living in Cordell. Russ has spent the last 12 years at the House of Representatives as the representative from District 55. Todd, how are you this morning? Man, I am fantastic. Good job there. You sound like an absolute uh, professional. I've done similar things before, but I appreciate that. Thanks, Matt. Uh, we're going to lead you off like we we're going to lead off a lot of the candidates and like Chad did last week. We want you to finish this sentence. You're running for treasurer because. Man, uh, thank you for that question. I'm running for, for treasurer because I have uh, I have the perfect uh, resume with the private sector banking finance side of it, which is really the treasurer is basically the bank CEO for the state of Oklahoma. And I, I'm, I uniquely have uh, a, a, a career in, uh, a, you know, a term in uh, in the state government. So that's kind of both sides of the barbell for that position. And uh, I really uh, I'm at a point in life where, you know, Serving, serving the people of Oklahoma is easier for me to do. There was a time when I was so busy, uh, you know, work, working to raise a family and make a living and, and get ahead that it just wasn't possible. But I'm at a point in life where it's a, it's a great opportunity. And with treasurer, your banking background makes sense, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's a good fit. Let's talk about Oklahoma investing its dollars correctly. Are they doing that right now correctly or not? Your take on that? Yeah, I don't I don't have any criticisms of the office. And, uh, you know, Randy McDaniels is, a, is so he and I served together and and a great guy. I don't, uh, I don't have any criticisms. I do think there's some things that I would like to go in there and take a look at. And, and uh, I've got some great ideas and uh, uh, would be happy to talk about those. Well, that was actually the second question here on my list. What is one thing that Oklahoma's treasurer's office isn't doing that it should be doing? Well, the you know they they are trying really hard to get that same property fund uh, uh, down to a, a range that makes sense, uh, um, and it's 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 really hard. And I'm not saying that uh, I have the perfect uh, recipe to make that happen, but I do have some ideas. My wife and I own a land title company and deal with trusts and estates regularly, and kind of seeing both sides of that, I, I would like to be able to see how that interfaces with the state treasurer's office and. Uh, and maybe there's some kind of a snag in the trust proceedings that just inadvertently or, or easily kicks those 
those valuables uh, over into the state treasurer's uh, possession, and <clears throat> maybe we could smooth that out and uh, <clears throat> get more money back in the hands of the people it belongs to. Well, obviously something that, yeah, you will have to work on as you get into office if elected. Talk to me about the state treasurer's role. We're all about the business community, obviously, at the state chamber. So why is this treasurer's office important when it comes to the business community of Oklahoma? Well, you know, a lot of people don't, don't know it and uh, may not be mentioned a lot, but it is an executive cabinet position with the governor when the, the big roundtable meeting starts. And there's, you know, the advisory capacity for that could uh, could mean a lot for the business community. Uh, you know, there's still, you know, there's a lot of things that the state treasurer's in charge of and it, it, and, and it all ends up being billions of dollars and uh, how those dollars are invested when they're spent out of, of uh, pensions. Uh, those kinds of things are, are what the state treasurer has an enormous amount of influence and, and uh, an advisory role there. Uh, there's also some, you know, there's some kind of things around the fringes on investments that uh, are offered uh, to this, you know, different industry in the state of Oklahoma that uh, I know statutorily has been out there for a while. And uh, I don't think that we've really participated at any significant level in, in, in those small parts of uh, partnering with businesses in Oklahoma. <clears throat> Excuse me, I had a pension manager person actually he wasn't really a manager he was involved in a pension uh talked to me yesterday about some some statutory opportunities that uh, he felt like had never really been exercised that would help small business and uh would certainly like to have those conversations and uh, uh you know we met with the oil and gas industry this week and was having a great conversation with them on uh, the role the state treasurer plays in investing dollars uh, around the country and how we can best influence those large money handlers to uh, support our oil and gas industries and agriculture and the things that are, you know, the economic values of Oklahoma. And uh, that's another role the treasurer can play. And uh, I do think that the professional experience and background and intuition that, that, someone really needs to have that to uh, be careful to not uh, to have any unintended consequences there. But uh, we are all about uh, Oklahoma industry and Oklahoma values and uh, want to do our best to, to uh, accentuate those and, and support those. Uh, I know there's a lot of technology in the uh, state treasurer's office. And I will tell you, coming from a, a banking background and, uh, and, you know, at the CEO level, you're, you're virtually responsible for everything at the end of the day. You definitely don't do all the work. You got a lot of people helping you, but uh, I, I've gone through a couple of deconversion, conversion changeovers with banks. And that is a, that is a major, that is a major lift to, to go through that kind of a transition with operating systems in a, in a large organization. And the treasurer uh, office is about 30 years behind on technology and, and we'll, we'll be having to go through a, a transition somehow. And the person doing that really needs to have the experience and background and be able to anticipate what that's how disruptive that's really going to be for a while to, to get through it. So those are, you know, those are things that, uh, at the end of the day, I hope really uh, make things better for the business world in, in Oklahoma. Hey, I, I spent <clears throat> I've spent a lifetime uh, on the backside of my political life running businesses and uh, uh, you know making payroll, paying taxes, dealing with regulatory concerns, and all the things that uh, everybody else out there, mom and pops, and big organizations are facing today. And um, you know, I think that's that's a unique value that I bring to the table uh, in this race that I, I really do have a lot of private sector experience, business experience. And man, I, I can't I mean, I, not only can I sympathize with the business world, I can empathize with the business world when it comes to the challenges and the and the, you know, the things that they the demands that are placed on them to uh, to kind of keep the ball rolling. And and um, at the end of the day, if it wasn't for all of those those people in Oklahoma wouldn't be uh, what it is today. And the future looks really bright for Oklahoma. The business industry climate looks really good. Uh, the governor's uh, partnered with uh, a lot of other people and is a, has a business mind and 
behind us when the legislature has tried to, <clears throat> you know, clear the path for small businesses to have a have a better uh, a runway to take off from. So, anyway, I, I'm I'm excited about the possibility of getting to serve the business people in Oklahoma. Actually, you hit on a couple of things that I was going to bring on itself. You mentioned your background with banking being perfect for the state treasurer office, but also the last 12 years in the House of Representatives, you mentioned that the treasurer is, is part of the political process as well. What has your time with the House of Representatives taught you that you think translates really well to this new position? Well, I think I think being there helps you kind of understand, you know, the things you 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 need to do and the things you don't need to do, and and kind of how to partner with uh, leadership and not try to get in the way or or get out of get out of your place on that. But <clears throat> excuse me, I, I just I, I can't emphasize enough what <clears throat> what being in the trenches and and being part of the business, uh, you know, the business industry in Oklahoma um means to to oklahoma and having leadership around the governor's table and in oklahoma that um, that understands when they have those deep conversations about the challenges that they're having and um, uh, would certainly have an open door policy for for businesses in oklahoma very good i guess wrapping up you mentioned the the innovation side of things and you mentioned the transmit or the actually the transfer that's going to have to happen when it comes to technology with the state treasurer office if money was not an issue are there any other innovation things that need to happen in the, the uh, treasurer's office to make it more practical to make it more uh, accountable and easier to work with for oklahoma I, you know i i don't see anything uh, that that really means spending a lot of money to make that happen but you know there's there's things that i'd be really uh, excited to look at and uh, uh, look at ways to uh, help the taxpayers and the investors in oklahoma maximize their investments and uh, keep them safe at the same time and uh, i've uh, i've had to do that for a long time on the back side of my my business experience and uh, would be very comfortable with that how can the business community, how can the taxpayers of Oklahoma uh, hold the office of the treasurer accountable? What are some of those key points that they need to look to to the office to make sure that, that things are going right in that department? You know, that's a great question. And the truth is that, you know, the obscurity of the state treasurer's office is is part of the frustration because I know when you try to go gather up unclaimed property, that process is pretty complicated, and uh, that's one of the things that I'd like to look at seeing if we can we can smooth that out a little bit. But uh, you know, really, the, the advo advocacy with their legislators uh, would be the probably the best and first place to start because we we interact with the legislature. Matter of fact, I would say ninety percent of what the state treasurer's office does is carry out the orders of the state legislature and uh, how, how to carry out those day-to-day -day, um, mandates uh, is, is a management uh, uh, management uh, requirement, but, the, but how that's going to look technically from a statutory standpoint really comes from the, the legislature. So, you know, for people to see problems, it's really beneficial for them to contact their legislature. I mean, I mean, they'd certainly be welcome to contact the uh, state treasurer's office, but a lot of the statutory changes would have to start at the legislative level. Definitely would. All right. Final question. It gives us a little look into your personality as well. And this one was scripted and I, I wanted to get to it. Do you have a personal financial hero out there? You know what? I, I don't know if I'd call him a hero, but my wife kind of jokes with me when we're watching TV at night and we, you know, and I, you know, you don't, you don't get in politics and, and be CEOs and, and, and I shamelessly say without having a little bit of uh, ego and uh, a little bit arrogant sometimes, I try not to be that way in public, but joking with my wife, uh, you know, I'm always telling her, you know, someday I'm going to have Jamie Dim Diamond's job and, uh, uh, and laugh about that. So uh, I don't think he does everything right, but he's got an incredible job and uh, it would be pretty fun to, to get to, you know, take that, uh, that fighter plane and take it for a loop and, and land it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. All right, Todd, we appreciate the time. Thank you for You're, joining us this morning. Yeah. Thank you for doing it. And, uh, 
uh, man, I'm, I'm so glad that uh, you got to be a part of that interview. Uh, I feel like I'm right there on uh, on television with you. So good job. <laughs> well, right back at you. And good luck in the election yourself. Longtime legislator, longtime uh, banking industry expert, Todd Russ, running for uh, state treasurer. We appreciate you joining us, Todd. Have a good day, bud. Bye-bye. All right.